when you go through your life with secrets constantly, it just after a while wears on you. And all this week we've been talking about what we're calling the male mystique. Bruce Jenner, how do you account for it? How do you describe what that is? I was kind of living my life for other people. It felt like for all those people who said, oh, I want to be like Bruce Jenner, you know, I couldn't let them down. At what point in my life am I going to get sick of all the distractions and have to turn around and actually deal with me as a person and who I am? That was a long, 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 long road. We first met Bruce Jenner 39 years ago. He was introduced to us as the favorite in the Olympic decathlon, competing for that magical title, greatest athlete in the world. Bruce, I think, came along at the right time. Everything about Bruce was something that people could relate to or want to ascend to. Uh, I'm going to sacrifice anything I have to do to win the Olympic Games. Jenner was 26 years old. Four years earlier, after finishing 10th in the 1972 Olympics, he dedicated his entire life to preparing himself for one more shot. Thank you very much. Selling insurance on the side to make ends meet, he trained on his own, with no coach or program. Just a dream that doubled as an obsession. Winning gold was all he thought about. It came on first. Not too bad. Meanwhile, his timing couldn't have been more perfect. Outside the bubble Jenner had built for himself, America was coming out of a decade of turmoil. It was the country's bicentennial. People were looking for a hero to believe in. And there he was, on our televisions that summer, for all to see. This man will be one of the focuses of our attention for the next two days. He's Bruce Jenner. It was an all-American story. A magnetic, cosmically gifted athlete. You couldn't take your eyes off of him. Here's a guy who put all of his effort into ten different disciplines, and then bang, in two days, he wasn't his best. Can he do it? It's one of those seminal moments in sports, I think. First, Jenner has picked up the back straight. He walked the world record. I didn't run 70 mile weeks for years leading up to the games to jog the 1,500 meters. And he is climbing through the trail. Running that turn, got that little lean going, and I can just hear this little gold medal jingling in my back pocket. It is a new personal fact. track that day, with a flag in his hand, Bruce Jenner made patriotism cool again in America. It was like a coronation. The crowd knew it. Bruce knew it. How does it get any better than that? What must it feel like at that moment? 75,000 people bringing their approval. He was a portrait of unconditional joy. But none of the millions watching had any sense of the agony and the anguish that lay beneath. The ironic part is the whole world thinks that they know who I am. That they know me and I'm the big hero and all that sort of stuff. And they knew nothing about me. In so many ways, William Bruce Jenner seemed like any other young boy growing up in the suburbs of New York in the 1950s. But ever since he could remember, he struggled with, in his own words, confusion about his gender. The feeling he was a female living in a male body. I've always known that I was different than everybody else. I could play that time of male gender role. I always felt female, and that really scared me. He didn't have a lot of self-confidence. I think he had a hard time relating to people. It made him very reserved, very closed. When he found out he could run faster than anybody else, 
that gave him that feeling of succeeding. In the beginning, sports simply helped him fit in. But after the Olympics, they transformed him. Into of all things, the epitome of masculinity. Not to mention marketability. I spent a good part of my life getting ready for that day. I worked out a lot, ate a lot of weeds. Exposure system helps. He always seemed at ease with fame. The hero of the Montreal Olympics. Let me tell you, this movie is nothing but fun. But his hardest role was away from the cameras. The gender dysphoria was always there, silently tormenting him. The pain only growing worse. Relationships for me were always tough. I always felt like I was hiding myself from everybody. The only way I could get through life was by distractions. Whatever's going on, just continue to work on your business. I did not want to deal with myself. I think one thing that you learn pretty quickly as a trans person is to perform so that you make people comfortable. That's so necessary in a world where we're often told that we should be ashamed of ourselves. He couldn't open up to us because he couldn't tell us his deepest feelings. It just broke my heart. And I had no idea. And of all people, your mother should have a better insight than that. But he was awfully good at hiding it. Life as a celebrity made the struggle even more severe. The mirage even more painful. Two marriages fell apart. And a rift with his children only widened as they grew up. I isolated myself all the time. I went out to work and then came back to my house and never really left. I would feel like a liar all the time. It's too bad because I wasted a lot of my life and nobody knew really who I am. And that's sad. In the late 1980s, Jenner started the process of transitioning to live as a woman, taking hormones and changing his appearance. But the fear of what it might do to his family was too overwhelming. And he stopped. I can't imagine looking into a mirror every day and the reflection is not what you're feeling inside. I, I, it's hard for me to understand how painful that would be. His third marriage and a new family ended years of isolation. Come on, get on your bike, let's go for it. And also rejuvenated his fame. <laughs> the true reality, though, was still In 2013, the marriage broke up. Now, in his 60s, with all 10 of his children grown, Jenner retreated back into solitude. Behind walls, hidden away from the media, hidden from the world. It was an escape, but also a way to finally confront and embrace his identity. He could have lived an entire life and let everyone believe the lie, believe the myth of the American hero. It takes an incredible amount of courage and strength to go against the grain of what people want you to be. I made a decision, I gotta start doing some things to make me feel better about myself. So just after dawn on a Sunday morning in January of last year, Jenner went in for a procedure to reduce his Adam's apple. The last shred of what he kept private for so long was about to be consumed by the public. I go in there, and of course when I leave the place, the paparazzi see it. I knew the media is going to like destroy me. And there was a picture of my dad crying in his car. That was really, really hard to see because my dad does not cry. I think in any situation, people forget that we're actual human beings. I'm thinking, you know what? Well, you got a gun. Now you have an easy way out. No more pain, no more problems. I, I can see how people are driven 
to that because you don't want to deal with life anymore. He's a public person. But how could he live his authentic life, the life he felt he's always been meant to live as a woman, privately? I came to a kind of a revelation. Out of all the things that I have done in my life, that maybe this is my calling. How are you doing, baby? Thank you. Thank you for doing this. It's going to be an emotional roller coaster, but somehow I'm going to get through. To take my struggle, throw it out in front of the world. Maybe I can bring understanding on this subject. It's time that I do my best. Yeah, I'm rolling. Yeah. Are you a woman? Um, yes, for all intents and purposes, I am a woman. I've been underwater. The storm has been raging. To think of someone not being able to be free for 65 years is heartbreaking. And to finally be free, that must be the greatest feeling in the world. There's too many miles on my bones. After we were introduced, the world is meeting Caitlyn Jenner again and for the first time. We never knew what lay beneath all along, but now we can see. The journey she took is what's made the stage so enormous. Just like in 1976, the timing couldn't be more perfect. so powerful to me about Caitlyn Jenner's story is that it inspires each of us to say that it's never too late to be who you truly are. This is an issue that we can deal with. This is not something that people have to die over. receiving that medal. I never thought I could ever be more proud. But I was wrong. I am now even more proud. <laughs> and believe me, I'm not losing anything. I'm gaining a better relationship with my child. The courageous, the stunning, Caitlyn Jenner. to talk after that? <laughs> Thank you 
so much. It is so wonderful to be here tonight. Now, the last few months have been a whirlwind of so many different experiences and emotions. But to tell you the truth, it seems like every time I turn around in life, I'm putting myself in these high pressure situations, competing in the games, raising a family. But I've never felt more pressure than I ever have felt in my life, than over the last couple of months. Picking out this outfit. Okay, girls, I get it. <laughs> you gotta get the shoes, the hair, the makeup, the whole process. It was exhausting. And next, the fashion police. Ugh. Please be kind on me, I'm new at this. But anyway. <laughs> and I just want to take a, a quick shout out to our soccer team that they, they have absolutely... <laughs> Ladies, you clean up very well. Well, the real truth is that before, just a few weeks, a few months ago, I had never met anybody else who was trans, who was like me. I had never met a trans person, never. Now, as you saw, I dealt with my situation on my own, in private. And that turned this journey into an already incredible education. It's been eye-opening, inspiring, but also frightening. All across this country, right now, all across the world, at this very moment, there are young people coming to terms with being transgender. They're learning that they're different. And they're trying to figure out how to handle that on top of every other problem that a teenager has. They're getting bullied. They're getting beaten up. They're getting murdered. And they're committing suicide. The numbers that you just heard before are staggering. But they are the reality of what it's like to be trans today. Just last month, the body of 17-year-old Mercedes Williamson a transgender young woman of color was found in a field in Mississippi, stabbed to death. I also want to tell you about Sam Cobb, a 15-year-old transgender young man from Bloomfield, Michigan. In early April, Sam took his own life. Now, Sam's story haunts me in particular because his death came just a few days before ABC aired my interview with Diane Sawyer. Every time something like this happens, people wonder, could it have been different if spotlighting this issue with more attention could have changed the way things happen? We'll never know. If there's one thing I do know about my life, it is the power of the spotlight. Sometimes it gets overwhelming, but with attention comes responsibility as a group as athletes, how you conduct your lives, what you say, what you do, is absorbed and observed by millions of people, especially young people. I know I'm clear with my responsibility in going forward to tell my story the right way, for me, to keep learning, to do whatever I can to reshape the landscape of how trans issues are viewed, how trans people are treated and then more broadly, to promote a very simple idea. Accepting people for who they are. Accepting people's differences. My plea to you tonight is to join me in making this one of your issues as well. How do we start? We start with education. I was fortunate enough to meet Arthur Ashe a few times, and I know how important education was to him. Learn as much as you can about another person to understand them better. I know the people in this room have respect for hard work, for training, for going through something difficult to achieve the outcome that you desire. I trained hard. I competed hard. And for that, People respected me, but this transition has been harder on me than anything I could imagine. And that's the case for so many others besides me. 
For that reason alone, trans people deserve something vital. They deserve your respect. And from that, and from that respect comes a more compassionate community, a more empathetic society, and a better world for all of us. There have been so many who have traveled this road before me, from his sports Renee Richards, to Chaz Bono, to Laverne Cox, and many others. Janet Mock, who's with us tonight. And I want to thank them all publicly, as well as the Espies and the late Arthur Rash and his family for giving me this platform to start this next phase of my journey. I also want to acknowledge all the young trans athletes who are out there, given the chance to play sports as who they really are. And now, and now, as of this week, it appears that trans people will soon be serving in the military. That's a great idea. We have come a long way, but we have a lot of work to do. I'd like to thank, personally, my buddy Diane Sawyer. You know, you can only tell your story the first time once, and Diane, you did it so authentically and so gracefully. And uh, me and the community is so thankful for that, and I thank you so much, Diane. I'm so proud to have you as a friend. <sighs> Here comes the tough part. I'd like to thank my family. Now, the biggest fear I've always had in coming out is I never wanted to hurt anyone else. Most of all, my family and my kids. I always wanted my children to be so proud of their dad for what he was able to accomplish in his life. You guys have given so much back to me. You've given me so much support. I am so, so grateful to have all of you in my life. Thank you. And certainly, last but not least, my mother. My mom, uh, who just a little over a week, a little over a week ago, um, had to have surgery and didn't think she was going to make it. And but she is here with me tonight to share this night. Now, you know, I always thought that I got my courage and my determination from my dad, who landed on Omaha Beach, fought all the way through World War II. But you know what I'm realizing now, Mom? I think I got all those qualities from you. Love you very much. And I'm so glad you're here to, to share this with me. You know, it is an honor to have the word courage associated with my life. But on this night, another word comes to mind, and that is fortunate. I owe a lot to sports. It's showed me the world. It's giving me an identity. If someone wanted to bully me, well, you know what? I was the MVP of the football team. That just wasn't going to be a problem. And the same thing goes tonight. If you want to call me names, make jokes, doubt my intentions, go ahead. Because the reality is, I can take it. But for the thousands of kids out there coming to terms with being true to who they are, they shouldn't have to take it. So for the people out there wondering what this is all about, whether it's about courage or controversy or publicity, well, I'll tell you what it's all about. It's about what happens from here. It's not just about one person. It's about thousands of people. It's not just about me. It's about all of us accepting one another. We're all different. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. And while it may not be easy to get past the things you always don't understand, I want to prove that it is absolutely possible if we only 
do it together. Thank you so much for this platform. Thank you so much for this honor bestowed on myself and my family. Thank you.